Hello my friends and welcome to Fishery. So, I'm Alexander Williamson and I have some terrifying news for you. So, if you've watched my channel a while, you know what Vibrio is. It is a bacterial infection that can spread from salt water to fresh water and kill fish in a staggeringly fast amount of time. Now, I had an infection of this, and I actually had to take it to the local university, the University of Washington, to figure out what killed three tanks full of plecos when I was breeding them, as well as some wood cats and a number of other fish. In fact, every fish in all the tanks that it got into died, and they died within within being infected, they died within 48 hours of one another. And I tried everything you can think of with antibiotics, with other medications as well. None of it worked, and their death was terrifying. It was a lesion that started around 12 hours, and it was kind of a blood blister. Within a few more hours, about 15 to 16 hours, it started oozing material into the water. The fish started twitching and just being clearly very uncomfortable, and all of a sudden, it started uh, to spread along their bodies until their flesh was actually rotting away, being necrotized. Uh, and this is a flesh-eating bacteria. Now, it can also impact humans. This bacteria is what will cause uh, so-called leaky gut syndrome, uh, which when you get shellfish or something uh, from the sea, seaweed can have it, fish can have it technically, but it's generally from shellfish that are raw. Uh, it, it, it causes you to be extremely ill, and if you actually have an open cut or wound and you get a hold of this bacteria, it will become a flesh-eating bacteria on humans as well as fish, as well as a number of other creatures, uh, from mammals to reptiles to birds. It is a nasty, nasty bacteria, and there is very little they can do to treat it other than to literally cut it out and get the material surrounding it out. And they actually have to remove some of the living tissue ahead of the dying tissue that the bacteria is feeding on and it leaves really terrible scars. So this bacteria, Vibrio, it, which is actually a group of bacteria, has been found in ocean water, and we know that things like red tide and shellfish poisoning is associated with it. Now, the terrifying news that we just recently received in a brand new paper published just yesterday is that Vibrio is living in sargassum. Now, sargassum is a seaweed, and if you saw my recent video from Florida, you'll know that we right now are battling a bloom of sargassum algae. It's a macro algae, bigger than any bloom ever in history. And they knew that this bacteria could survive on that sargassum, and sargassum algae already has a uh, a bunch of toxins in it and it also concentrates heavy metals from its environment so this stuff washes up on shore and it's nearly impossible to deal with in a safe way other than just straight up burying it you can't burn it you can't add it to crops like you would with other seaweeds and things and it's just a really nasty uh, it's a really nasty seaweed and it piles up in huge amounts and then when it dries out it can even go airborne and impact people's lungs and respiratory systems. So it's a bad deal. Uh, over 10,000 people were hospitalized in the Bahamas already earlier this year when the first wave washed up and we have a bloom of it unlike anything we've ever seen. 5,000 miles from end to end in length and another few hundred miles across and it is landing in Florida and the Gulf states right now in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So we knew that this bacteria could live on sargassum uh, seaweed or macroalgae. Now the scary news that we just got is that it also can live on microplastics. 
And if you know anything about microplastics and the giant gyres that exist out in the ocean, things like that, where it's collecting and pollution, debris, uh, plastic bags, pieces of uh, big lighters, you know, you name it. Anything that humans have made that's trash that's, that's out there, it breaks into little pieces, it floats, and it collects. We knew that that was also happening, and it's only been going on for around 50 years in the, the whole scope of Earth's history, right? In geological time, that's but a second. Yet, we just found out that this bacteria, Vibrio, can live on plastic. Not only that, but it actually is able to live, spread, and embed on plastic within just a few hours of being in the water with it and it can only survive in the water uh, free floating for a short time it needs a host like that seaweed or like a shellfish or like humans or skin and it turns out that now we're realizing it can live on those pieces of plastic some of which are smaller than you know a grain of sand and yet it can have thousands and thousands of bacterium colonizing it not only that but it creates a bacterial film and that bacterial film then gets thick and is far more dangerous than just a thin coating or the stray bacteria that lives on an uneven surface when it can form an aufuk or a uh, bacterial mat really it becomes more dangerous and what we're seeing is that the plastic that's out there in our oceans is also possibly fueling the sargassum blooms and we don't understand the link yet they're they're just now doing this research but there appears to be a possible link between that and the vibrio bacteria and the sargassum because they're all being found together and they're all mutually benefiting from one another and living in a way that is far more densely populated the bacteria colonies than are ever than have ever been seen before in the past and it is creating what scientists that have seen it are calling the perfect storm or the worst nightmare scenario that combined with how it dries out and becomes airborne the particles of the seaweed when it piles up sometimes six seven eight feet tall on the beach every single day and they have to use bulldozers to get rid of it this stuff is very problematic now we're adding in that we're seeing this flesh-eating bacteria living in it now the way it hops into the freshwater aquarium it can be in saltwater aquariums it can be in very cold water also and we knew this however now we're seeing strains and it looks like plastic is one of the vectors that carries it that are surviving in warm water freshwater aquariums now when i had it it turned out that they thought at university of washington about four years ago that I had some snails from a pond that may have been brackish and those snails that came in on a plant probably had the Vibrio in their gut and they are somewhat immune to it and it then spread to a pleco which they found the snail in the digestive tract of. So that's how my freshwater tank got it but once it infected one pleco, you can go back and watch this video it looks like all my fish are just falling apart. I mean, you can see bones and connective tissue. It, it was tragic and terrifying. Uh, I had to take the tanks, and other than the one that sample went to the university, I just put you know a whole, whole gallon of bleach between the three of them into them, and you know I just I just tossed them out. Uh, it, it was very scary, you know, I wasn't sure if it, it could have spread to me or not, but it turns out uh, that now, yes, it, it could have. And this is something that is likely to become a more and more pressing issue now that we're seeing this trifecta of organisms working together. Now, they're also sequencing the genome of this stuff, and they've found it in everywhere from the guts of baby eels, uh, the elven uh, little baby eel larvae that are found out in the Sargasso Sea. And the Sargassum 
uh, algae and seaweed that's out there, it was kind of just seen as part of the, the landscape traditionally. But the last 50 years, it has evolved with the plastic and the plastic is fueling it metabolically. And with that in the water, the microplastics also are putting out enough chemicals, they're thinking perhaps, that that is what's helping it colonize on the seaweed in new thickness levels and new layers. As well as if you just get a little tiny piece of plastic, it can harbor an entire colony that lives many generations, whereas it would be dead in the water literally without that. So this is really scary news, and it's been worked on by scientists from Japan, uh, the Netherlands, and uh, the University of Florida Atlantic uh, Oceanographic Studies. And it was funded by the National Institute of Science, this most recent research. So it's just another thing to uh, be thankful that you know, we have scientists looking out for this, but they're trying to come up with an approach to how to treat this, what sort of medications or chemicals we could use to prevent this, and also what is even causing these giant blooms of this algae that we have records for 500 years in the Caribbean uh, plus, and we've only seen it do this since 2011, anywhere near this scope. So something is changing and it very well may be the plastics or even maybe oil spills because uh, there's something about the hydrocarbons that plastics are made out of as well that is metabolically driving this bacteria the same way as when it lives in flesh. So, scary news, stay tuned. I hope you have a great day other than that nightmare material and I'll talk to you next time on Fishery. Bye guys.